On September 26, NASA and partners crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid with the goal of shifting its trajectory. It was all part of its double asteroid redirection test mission known as DART and the first ever test of planetary defense. Lindley Johnson is planetary defense officer at NASA and program executive for its planetary defense coordination office, which funded the DART mission. Lindley, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you, glad to be here. We had talked earlier when you first launched, so remind us of the DART mission and how it played out. Well, uh, the DART mission was to test the technology uh, to change the motion of an asteroid in space. Uh, so uh, DART launched back in uh, November of 21, and it took us 10 months to get to this double asteroid system, and we were to impact the moon of uh, Didymos, called Dimorphos, uh, and change its orbital period about uh, Didymos. And so on the evening of the 26th of September, uh, the DART spacecraft did what it was designed to do, uh, direct hit on Dimorphos, and uh, now our observations post-impact have confirmed uh, that we have changed uh, the orbit of Dimorphos. So how much has it changed? Well, the orbital period prior to the impact was almost 12 hours, 11 hours and 55 minutes. And we changed that period by 32 minutes. Uh, so um, about, uh, about a 4% change uh, in the uh, orbital period. So uh, we did prove that this uh, technology uh, could be used. And, and how significant is that change? Is it, was it in line with expectations? Did it exceed expectations? Well, there were a range of uh, what uh, we thought we could expect. Uh, uh, there are several variables in, involved. Uh, composition of the asteroid itself is one of the big variables. We didn't know what that was. So we had a range of, uh, of compositions uh, that would uh, affect uh, how much the change was. Um, we sort of uh, expected somewhere between uh, several minutes to uh, several tens of minutes, uh, uh, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and uh, kind of the midpoint of our uh, estimates was around 10 minutes. Um, so uh, this uh, change was more than that midpoint, but well within the range of uh, what could have happened. And I know you're still collecting data, but what have you learned so far from the initial data that you've gotten so far? Uh, well, uh, 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 some of the uh, images that have been collected uh, by uh, both ground and space telescopes uh, show us uh, the amount of ejecta uh, that was uh, blasted out uh, by this impact. Uh, and that was uh, probably more than, uh, than we expected, which uh, uh, sort of explains why the orbital change was more. You know, part of what happens here is the impact blast a bunch of material off the surface of the, of the object, and that enhances uh, the momentum change uh, just from the impactor itself. Uh, so uh, uh, seeing this uh, uh, ejecta, both uh, uh, from ground-based uh, telescopes, uh, we didn't know uh, uh, we'd see that much just from the ground, uh, but also from space-based telescopes, both the Hubble and James Webb telescope, uh, uh, imaged uh, after the impact. Why did NASA carry out this mission to begin with? What's the big picture here? Well, the big picture is uh, uh, there is still a lot of uh, natural debris uh, from the formation of the solar system, uh, asteroids and comets that come into Earth's uh, uh, neighborhood uh, in the solar system. Uh, so uh, the Planetary Defense uh, Coordination Office uh, at NASA's responsibility is for of finding uh, any asteroid that uh, poses a, an impact hazard with the Earth and predicting out into the future when it, that hazard may, uh, may occur. Uh, so uh, first of all, our highest priority is, is finding them and knowing what, uh, what the danger may be. But then what are we going to do about it? Uh, what if, what uh, capability do we have? What technology, space technology that we now have can we apply uh, to protect the Earth from uh, this type of natural disaster uh, ever happening again. And so that's what DART was about, is demonstrated, and we do have the technology to change the motion uh, of a cosmic object in well, space. Well, let's talk about what could happen. And, and I know that obviously this particular asteroid didn't pose any threat to Earth, but if one did, 
what could happen? I mean, would it destroy the entire planet? Uh, no, uh, uh, there are no planet killers uh, out there, uh, uh, and not even uh, any as big as the uh, asteroid comet that was uh, thought to cause the demise of the uh, dinosaurs. We, uh, there are those of that size out there, but we have now found uh, everything uh, that large and, and, and larger. So, so now we're talking about asteroids that are in the uh, uh, range of, uh, of a few hundred feet, uh, uh, a few hundred meters uh, in size. Now, an asteroid impact by, uh, say, uh, a, an asteroid the size of Dimorphos, 160 meters or so in size, about the size of a small football stadium, uh, if it were to occur, occur near a metropolitan area, uh, it would be a disaster on a scale that we've never had to deal with. Uh, uh, the blast uh, radius uh, from uh, something that large uh, hitting us at 17,000 miles an hour uh, would cause uh, devastation across a, a statewide area. And what was the biggest challenge, Lindley, in, in this project overall? Uh, well, uh, the... Uh, uh, Figuring out the uh, uh, the orbit uh, of, uh, of the asteroids, uh, uh, Didymos, and particularly uh, Dimorphos, about it, uh, uh, understanding the, their position in space and the position of the moonlet uh, relative to the asteroid, and then navigating the spacecraft uh, to be at the right point at the right time uh, to to uh, uh, to hit Dimorphos, uh, uh, you know. Hitting a bullet with a bullet doesn't begin to <laughs> explain the velocities that we're, we're that we're talking about here. So, um, first, you know, building a spacecraft uh, uh, specifically designed to do this uh, mission, and then getting it there at the right time and in the right place. You know, finally, I'm wondering if you're looking at any other ways of testing how to deflect asteroids. Well, yes, we are, uh, and we have a list of different techniques uh, that might be. Uh, uh, practical to use uh, for this type of thing. Uh, in uh, principle, anything that will change the speed, uh, the orbital velocity uh, of the asteroid, uh, changes its position in, into the future uh, time. So anything that you can do to either speed up or slow down uh, the asteroid, uh, and you impart that to it uh, several uh, months to years in advance, uh, then it will arrive at the point in space uh, where it could have impacted Earth either early or late. So that's the whole principle. You just need to change the speed of it just a, just a hair. So any technique uh, that you can think of uh, to, you know, change a 2,000 metric ton <laughs> object in space uh, could be used. So we, we have uh, ideas like a gravity tractor, uh, uh, ion beam uh, deflector and, uh, and you know, a whole list of, of techniques that, that might be tested. And I didn't get a chance to ask you how you felt when it hit, but we'll do that for our next interview, okay? Lindley, <laughs> okay, thanks sure. so much for the, for the interview. Yeah, you're quite welcome. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.